Well, Ian, thanks for inviting us back in today. I know you've done a lot of business over this last mm -hmm. period. There's been a lot of work going on around the club, uh, and I know you'd said to us that you wanted to try and get some information out to the fans. And I suppose the big one today is that you've just made a new signing. Yeah, well, I mean, I think uh, the sport's like to know about these things and injuries and various things. So, yeah, we signed Aaron Moorhead on an 18 month contract. Um, he comes from Falk, he was their captain. I mean, I think he's had a tough last 12 months, like everybody, you know, it's a big club for and they've been through, going through a real hard time, so the change of scenery might work really well for him. He, he covers right back position, he plays centre back, uh, he can play centre midfield. Um, I think with the situation with Michael Rose, and you know, also, you know, the other three centre backs are 30 plus, that's not to say they're going, no, I can assure you that. Um, it was important we got somebody in. You know, looking longer term without taking an eye off the ball um, shorter term. I mean, he's in the championship, he's got a really good pedigree, he won the title with Thistle. Um, and, you know, he was an ever present for Falkett when they finished second and third in the league, when there were some big clubs in the league under Peter Houston. So, we're delighted to get him. It's another of these circumstances where you brought another captain into the, the club. You've always talked about that. Yeah, yeah, yep. yep. Um, um, that wasn't really high up my thinking in terms of the amount of people we've got like that at the club. So it, it was a long term signing, and uh, I've, I've told Aaron it's up to him to get in the team. You know, it's, uh, he's going to want to get in the team straight away. But it does cover us along the back now, obviously, with, as I'm going to talk about, David uh, going out alone. Um, and I, I hope he does great, I'm sure he will. You brought up there, you just mentioned Michael Rose signing a, a, a pre contract mm -hmm. with yeah. Coventry City. Yeah. How, how does that affect things? Well, listen, the pre-contract thing, I've got no, I think cross-border, I think there's no issues with it at all. Coventry and ourselves have been in negotiations, well, me and Coventry have been in negotiations and they'll be very, very professional. I mean, you thought you saw, you saw last night at Rugby Park, pre-contracts in Scotland, what type of mischief they can <laughs> cause, you know? Um, so, he goes with their very, very best wishes. You know, all players are different. You know, there's two or three others I think will probably leave. Um, but Michael, you know, is the type that wants to get his future sorted out, so he doesn't have to worry about it. And he wants to come back here and give his all and, and try and win as many matches as we can. Uh, he knows it's the next step and so forth, but the, the Coventry City are, are on their way back and they were a big, big club, you know, they're talking 20,000 at home games, they're on a training uh, ground, the, the, the Rico Arena. You know, and I'm the same as the fans, I mean, as much as I've said at board meetings that I told all the board to expect to lose, some of these guys, it's not nice when they go because you, you want to keep them. I'd like to keep all of them and grow the team together, but that's not what we are, and we've got to come to terms with that. It's not what we are. And he goes with our very best wishes and hopefully keeps up the level of performances he has done since certainly in the last 18 months, two years. Now, your, your philosophy for trying to keep uh, players, keeping them up fit and everything, does that go with your, your, your loans that you're putting out? Well, that's say? more, I think, I said about a development situation. I, we think. I'll, I'll take them individually, David Ferguson, we think he's got a lot of attributes to be a really good player and a lot of people forget he's the same age as Alan Forrest. Um, he's quick, he uses the ball really well, he's got to find a, a belief, he's got to find a, maybe a bit of nastiness about him, he's a terrific boy, but he, he's going out there to get a, a lot of game time under a manager, Jim Duffy, who I really trust, um, to come back ready to challenge to be a first team player next season at our club. Craig McGuffey is, is the same, I mean Craig is, everybody knows what I think of him, but you know, he's lost, his confidence is down a little bit, he hasn't had as many minutes on the pitch as he would have liked. He burst on the scene a couple of years ago in, in the Championship season and scored a wonder goal against him at Easter Road, if you remember. And I wouldn't say he hasn't kicked on from there, I mean, I, I've said to, to Craig yesterday that in the Championship winning season, you know, for eight, nine, ten games towards the end of the season, he should have been starting every game, but he was having such a... You remember the influence he was having coming off the bench. I had to keep him there. He was winning games and points for us. So he's a player of wonderful technique. And again, he's 21. He's a young, young boy. He's going out to play Wraith Rovers under another manager who I really trust, John McGlynn. Get a lot of game time. Develop that way. Because as much as you coach, you can coach people. That Michael Rose is a great example. They need time to develop and be playing first team football. And Wraith Rovers are a big club. You know, and uh, they'll be playing in some big games between now and the end of the season in front of a demanding crowd. And it'll be great for Craig McGuffey. And he's been told, you know, if he come back next season, he's got to really, really push to get in the first team. He's more than capable of a natural talent because he's got wonderful ability. 
I, I think many of the fans don't realise the belief that you've shown these two players. I think mm. it's been uh, well noted that David Ferguson has signed another contract. Yes, yes. But Craig McGuffey. Yeah, Craig has as well. I mean, there's no way I would let Craig go if I hadn't signed an extension. So he's signed an extension until the end of next season. And that's great news for the fans because he is a bit of a favourite with the fans as well. Well, he's a local boy and he's everybody can see that he has more than talent. You need to. You know, not know anything about football, but see that there's all sorts of things he can add to his game. But it's another one he's got to find belief, and uh, you get that by playing first team football, and he'll get that opportunity at a big club, then Wraith Rovers, who they certainly are a championship club, and it's up to him now to go and, and grab this opportunity and come back, not content to be on the bench, but want to be playing in the starting level. Um, another one is that you brought James Hilton back again. How has he progressed with his time in the junior? Yeah, he has. He has, and he's he's looking good in training. And uh, I spoke to him. I felt he, he should come into the first team squad and see how he does between now at the end of the season. With a view to if we feel he's going to be able to progress with us as a club, I think Luke McCown has already showed that he's going to be that. We, we think very highly of him. He'll be. I would imagine he'll be off on a contract soon. And, you know, with a, I should say, with the, the two players going to go on as well, we'll, we'll sign Darren, but uh, we're actively seeking one, maybe two more, uh, certainly one minimum that plays in the forward areas. So hopefully, I'll have news of that um, sooner rather than later. Now, a lot of talk over the last few weeks is Air have gone through a little bit of an injury crisis. What is the situation well, just now? We have, but um, you know, we can we can never forget that the first three, four months of the season. We didn't, you know, we handled it really well. We didn't have a lot of injuries, which is all credit to, to Stevie, although he, you know he's not a medical worker. Um, but, but just the downside for us is that maybe one or two players who maybe lacking confidence or are still having to play because you know the bench isn't what it was. I mean, up at Inverness, there's only three in the bench. Everybody gets injuries throughout the season, but there's certain clubs in the league that are better equipped to handle it. And that's just that's not a moan. That's just the way things are. But they're clearing up slowly but surely. Mark Kerr. I think we'll be back. With, he won't play tomorrow or Tuesday. He would have a chance at Alloa. If not, there's a two week break after that. He'll definitely be back for that. Adams will definitely be back for the two week break after Alloa. We get really good news on his scan. And I, I must add, Stephen McGuire got the diagnosis absolutely spot on. Um, Andy Gagan's going for a scan tomorrow on his calf problem. It's kind of been a problem now for, if you remember, in the last season. It was the last three months of last season. We need to get to the bottom of that. He might be another month. Uh, and, and Alan Force is coming on, he's got all status pubis and he can't be rushed. And there's one other player, isn't it? I don't know who it is. Oh right, Shankland. Um, <laughs> he'll be fit very soon. You're not going to go any further than that? No, no, I mean I don't, I don't think we'll okay for Friday, but I wouldn't know him out for Tuesday. Thanks Ian. Thanks for the update. Cheers.